I think there is no need to introduce uh, Professor Ivo Białyński Grula, co-founder of our institute, honored with uh, so-called Polish Nobel Prize and uh, awarded by uh, Humboldt Foundation. So today he will tell us about relativistic time crystals. So Professor, the screen is yours. Let me start the talk. It's relativistic time crystals. Crystals will be made from electron positron pairs. Time crystals have become a big business now. And one of the leading gurus is Krzysztof Saha, who has recently published a book about time crystals. I don't personally like to be in a crowd, but this time I could not resist the temptation because there were some things happening before that gave me the idea that perhaps something can be done. Next slide. This talk is based on our recent work. And this is the main message in red. Electron positron pairs in the vacuum coupled in a self-consistent way to the electromagnetic field may form time crystals. Next slide. Now, what is it all about? Vacuum is not empty. We know now according to quantum field theory, which is the main theory of the world, there's a lot of things that happening are happening in the vacuum. And here is, for example, the contribution, low order contribution to the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron. And these are the diagrams and the diagram E here, the furthest to the right, contains an explanation. If there is a photon, photon may hit the vacuum and the vacuum produces a pair. And this is how it all proceeds. Next slide. So we started doing something related, but not time crystals. A year ago, we sent to the archive our paper, which was called the time trap. Time trap is a configuration of electromagnetic fields that causes the pairs to be trapped in a certain period of time. Pairs are present in the trap region, but they're absent before and after. Now, this is, of course, not the time crystal. Next slide, please. Because these structures that we call time traps they could not be called time crystals because we opened a review paper by Krzysztof Sacha and Jak Zakrzewski. And they tell us that time crystals are time periodic self-organized structures postulated by Polish physicists, one may say, but of distant origin. And our traps are certainly not self-organized. They're induced, we kick the vacuum with the external electromagnetic field. And that is certainly not self-organization. But when time crystal business became very popular, we realized that there is a way to do something which will be self-organized. And this is based on the Wigner function. So please, the next slide. And the physical content of our time crystals can be described as follows. Time-dependent electromagnetic field produces electron-positron pairs. They may be described by the Wigner function. Moving pairs produce the electric current. The electric current produces the field. And this is then self-consistent. The only approximation that will be made is that the field is not quantized, is the mean field approximation, is the mean electromagnetic field, and it produces the average value of the current. Next slide, please. What is the Wigner function in ordinary non-relativistic quantum mechanics? It's a Fourier transform of the product of two wave functions. And this is a function of R and P, so it lives in the phase space. And therefore, it can be compared with the classical distribution function in the phase space. Well, it is 
not quite the distribution function because in most cases it is not positive. However, it can be used to calculate expectation values of quantum variables. Next slide, please. And now we go 30 years back. And this is our paper with Yash Rafelski that we published then. And this was about the Dirac vacuum described in the phase space. So this is the analog of the Wigner function in the quantum electrodynamic setting. Next slide, please. This is the definition. It's a bit cut off in the right, but probably that cannot be fixed. It's still visible. So we have the quantized Dirac electron field. The operators Psi and Psi dagger are field theoretic operators. They're coupled to the electromagnetic field. It's the genuine quantum theory. The field is not quantized. However, electrons and positrons are fully quantized. Otherwise, we would not be able to create pairs. So what do we do? We write the analog of the Wigner function, taking these two operators now. Of course, these are operators. So to make them into a function, we squeeze these operators between the state of the system. The state phi is some system, some state of the system made of the electron positron pairs. This extra factor here, which you see here, which contains the potential is necessary to secure the gauge invariance. Under the gauge transformation, the operators pick up a phase, and this phase is canceled by the integral of the vector potential. So the Wigner function carries the information about the state. Next slide, please. Well, now we can work. Mathematics is involved, but not impossible to do. We obtain the evolution equation for this matrix. It has 16 components, so it is rather complicated. These components can be grouped in a different way. The best way is to use, again, the standard Dirac matrices. There are 16 such matrices. They have physical interpretation. Four of them, for example, are gamma mu, which are associated with the electromagnetic current, and they will be important for our purpose. And the evolution equations are, in fact, equations for these components of the Wigner function. So in order to find solution describing time crystals, it suffices to consider a greatly simplified case. No magnetic field and a uniform, unidirectional external electric field. Of course, at this point, it's external, but later it will become dynamical. Next slide, please. Now, this is the page for our paper that I mentioned. You cannot see it well, but I can assure you that when you look closer, it looks horribly complicated. The equations for these components of the Wigner function, which are here from number 20 to number 31, look innocent, but they are, in fact, non-local. This is also true in the non-relativistic setting. The Wigner function in non-relativistic quantum mechanics obeys the evolution equations, which are non-local. The reason for that is simply uncertain relation. P and X cannot be defined at the same time, and this causes this non-local behavior. So these are very complicated equations. However, our simplifying assumption will help us a lot. Next slide, please. We obtain from these 12 coupled integral differential equations in this simplified case, something that can be handled. So we only obtain four equations and they decouple from the rest. So already instead of 16, we have four equations. In addition, these are the equations that involve the essential components, namely the number of pairs, which was denoted in our paper by F3, and the electric current, G1. 
Next slide, please. So these are the equations obtained from this paper under this simplifying assumption. The, one may say, material derivative, the analog of the material derivative in continuous media here denoted by capital DT is the sum of the derivative with respect to time plus the derivative sort of a material derivative with respect to P which is multiplied by the electric field. Now this form of the derivative, so these are partial differential equations. The partial differential equations even in this simple setting are not, uh, at least for me, were not easy to solve. So we change the variables and the variables, this is what is important, have physical meaning. I said before that P is gauge invariant because the Wigner function was gauge invariant. So it is like kinetic momentum. Kinetic momentum is gauge invariant because it is directly related to velocity. However, in the canonical formalism, we have the canonical momentum, which is the difference between the kinetic momentum and the potential. I put here the charge equal to one to simplify the notation. And now there is something in mathematics called method of characteristics for solving certain classes of partial differential equations. And this method enables one to convert partial into ordinary differential equations. And ordinary differential equations now with mathematica and all that is a piece of cake. So P now becomes just a parameter and not a variable. Next slide, please. And this is an explanation how this mechanism works. So I take a very simple equation that can be solved exactly. And I use this method of characteristics to show how it can be used. So we have this partial differential equations with this derivatives t, dt and dp. And it, there is something on the right hand side. And this equation has an analytic solution. In this equation, p, mind you, is the kinetic momentum. Now, in this theory of characteristics, we replace the partial differential equations by ordinary differential equations, just by going from P to K, from P to canonical momentum. And the relation for this particular case, let me go back to the top, you see cosine T. So electric field in this case is cosine T. And the potential for cosine T, as we can easily guess, is sine T, because the derivative of sine T is cosine T. So we have, to, we have to substitute in the first equation instead of P, now P plus K plus sine T. And when you factor include, two. Yes, because there was one sign, look at the equation at the top. We yes. have one sign there in the equation, in the original equation, and now replace P by K plus sign. Another sign will come. Uh -huh. Okay, and this okay. is why, okay, in the differential equation, we obtain two sine t. This is a simple differential equation. We can solve it easily. And here is the result. The result contains cosine square t plus k sine t. Now we have to go back to our variables to the kinetic momentum. So instead of k, in the solution of the ordinary equation, we substitute P minus sine T. What we get is that sine squared and cosine squared combined to give minus one, which was present in the original equation. And the rest gives us already the function. So there is this method, which is now being used for by us to produce solutions. Next slide, please. This is the set of five nonlinear scalar equations, which are the ordinary equations obtained by the method of characteristics. Well, first they looked sort of uninteresting, but when we looked closer at them, they really are quite intricate. 
And of course, these are self-coupled equations because the last two equations describe the, in this simple case, the electromagnetic field coupled to the current. K is like the potential because it contains the potential and the derivative of K is the electric field, but the derivative of the electric field, which is a very simple form of Maxwell equations, there is no B. So the only term in Maxwell equations is the time derivative of the electric field. And this is the current. So th this system is self-consistent. Next slide, please. Now this system shows some regularities, which are quite interesting. There is a constant of motion, which can be identified with energy. Why energy? Because the square of electric field divided by two is the electromagnetic energy. Therefore, whatever we add to electromagnetic energy, which is conserved, will be the total energy of the system. It depends on F. F stands for F3 now. Oh, I should have mentioned before that I dropped these indices three and one, and I have now three functions. F stands for F3, G stands for G1, and H stands for G2. So there is also some kind of a norm that is preserved during the time evolution. Well, unfortunately, the energy, the constancy of the energy does not guarantee that we don't have solutions which are just running away and having no physical sense. This can still happen because the term E squared can be canceled by the term with K, which can be negative, And then we have these unpleasant solutions. So there are bounded solutions. I will discuss them in a moment. And now next slide, please. A curiosity here. This system of five equations has a very nice canonical structure. There is the energy. So let's identify the energy with the Hamiltonian. And then the Hamiltonian should generate by Poisson brackets the time evolution. The energy now can be written in the following form. P squared over two, that was the electric energy now we have 2x, mz plus 2mx. If you take the Poisson brackets for the components of the angular momentum, you recover all these five equations. If you identify m and p and x with the following variables from this Wigner function, p is electric field, x is potential, mx is f2, my is h2, mz is g2. Now, remember what I said before, that there is a constant of motion, which I said the norm, but now it also, also has the meaning of the total square of the angular momentum. mx squared plus mi squared, mz squared uh, is constant. Therefore, this top, this is a coupling of a top to a particle, to the freely moving particle. I don't know whether this model appears anywhere else in physics, but it, it's a nice model. And one could even now ask the question, what are the quantum mechanical states if you take this Hamiltonian as the Hamiltonian for the wave function? But I will not discuss this. Now I go to the next slide, go back to our time crystal. So I choose a random choice. Well, there are so many possibilities that it is not easy to find something interesting because the space of solutions of these five equations, of course, is space which is labeled by five parameters. For example, the initial values of all the functions. So we have big space, five parameters. And if you just take any combination of initial values, you get something like that. We have oscillations of the current in blue, and we have oscillations of the electron positron pairs. But next slide, please. Fine tuning gives something more interesting. We get something which has two periods, a long period 
and the short period. There are oscillations in the short period, and there is uh, also the long period, which is definitely present here. Next slide, please. And this continues. I solved these equations for a longer time. And now by doubling the long period, I keep this shape. Next slide, please. Now I go further and this shape still emerges. Next slide, please. And it continues like that. It is continuously expanding. We have solution which is self-supporting. The number of pairs oscillates. These are the small oscillations in, in black near the, these are the small oscillations of the electron positron pair relative to the background, which is subtracted here. So these oscillations are with respect to the zero line. And these large oscillations are the oscillations of the electric current. So next slide, please. Now, why do I show this? Because the plots that I have shown are not the plots of the original partial differential equation set, but is the plot for the solutions of the ordinary differential equations. So, so these plots do not represent what we would really like to see, that is the components of the original Wigner function. However, if you plot the potential in this case, which is also a solution of the ordinary differential equation, you also have the same period. Therefore, next slide, please. If you now substitute if one could substitute, I cannot do it because if I have a numerical solution, I don't know where to substitute the new variables into this solution. But if that was possible to do, then I would have final functions that contain periodic solution imposed on the same period solutions. So the periodic structure will not change. So periodic time crystals in our greatly simplified model do exist. Next slide, please. Uh, pardon, I have a question if I, if I may. Could you please uh, recall the definition of uh, time crystal and in what it differs from just periodic uh, behavior? Well, this is a long history which is described in the book by Krzysztof Sachano. I, I am not even trying to discuss this complicated history. Well, the original idea of Wilczek was later shown not to be quite correct, but Wilczek started the avalanche and the avalanche is still moving. Fortunately, there are no dead bodies covered by this avalanche, but many people are happy to contribute to this. Yeah, but I, I'm just asking because I, I have, uh, honestly, I have a, a problem understanding what time crystal is. Time is crystal a... is a self-supported periodic solution of the behavior of some physical system. Self-supported is the key word. If you have any I, oscillation I... which is induced say by external force. Well, yeah. there are complications. Got it. Okay, okay, self-supported. So it, it, it is not a result of uh, external driving. No, that, that, no that I don't want to involve you in this discussion because it, there is also a group of uh, cases w which are called time crystals, which are not quite self-supported because they are sort of kicked from the outside. But I'm sure that perhaps Krzysztof Sacha would respond to this question in simple terms. Yes, I, I think that there is there's a very quite a lot different uh, examples yeah. of time crystal behavior, and I would I, I actually um, uh, I'm I'm trying to 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 think to which category of the time crystal behavior the result uh, uh, you are presented uh, belongs to because I guess that as a system is time independent there is no external yes drive. absolutely so what, what we, is mm -hmm. time independent 
So what we have equations, of course, are invariant under time translation. Mm -hmm. So what we have, we have a continuous time translation or symmetry. Absolutely. And now, so that 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 means that stationary solution of the equation of motion should also fulfill this continuous time translation or symmetry. But now, uh, in time crystal business, people are looking for the for the stationary solution which breaks the uh, time Make translation or symmetry. And now. For the continuous symmetry, uh, Wilczek's idea was uh, that uh, maybe there is a many body system where this spontaneous breaking of the symmetry can happen in the ground state. And it turned out it was not possible. Another question, if it can happen in an excited eigenstate, which is also interesting. But I think that, that this, this the, 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 the system uh, you are uh, presenting in, in this talk belongs to the not to the ground state, but to oh, some yes, side. Yes, quite correct. Yes. Eigen state. But now I have a question because now you have a constant of motion. And if you choose a constant of motion, then you can ask uh, what is the lowest energy state for this manifold, for this manifold corresponding to the chosen cause constant of motion. And if the lowest energy state in this manifold reveals periodic behavior, then such a system would belong to the so-called symmetry protected time crystal, which, which is of course interesting because in general, one can expect that if there is, if, uh, if we have a, some even time independent system, then of course there is are some periodic solution, uh, which can be not maybe related to time crystal behavior. So my question is, this uh, the time crystal behavior you have belongs to some lowest energy state in a certain manifold given by the constant of motion or it doesn't i don't know mm -hmm. i am planning to check this but uh, be, well of course it would be very nice to find an explicit solution of these equations and then really many questions can be asked without mm -hmm. Can problems, I, but these equations so far were not solved. Can I ask the question? Sure. Uh, that remind this this setup presented here reminds me something from a classical physics, which is uh, in a plasma physics known as the Landau damping. If you have the electrons coupled to the electromagnetic field, they, there is a self-consistent solution for the Vlasov equation. We have uh, plasma waves and the electrons. And if there is addition external field applied, external homogeneous unidirectional Electric field. Sorry. What Hello? was that? Hello? Okay, go ahead. Are we still in the air or? Yes. We are, we are. There was a time crystal from the heavens participating in it. The, and uh, then the, there are electrons which are, so to say, trapped within the potential well created by the plasma wave. And the external field accelerate those electrons. But there is no external field here. This is- now You have a constant state. electric field. No, this is not a constant electric field. It changes all the time. And yeah, it's not that, external, it's so self-consistent. Let, let, let me continue. If there is an external field, then the electrons are accelerated within each of these potential wells. Mm -hmm and they will hit the, the wall of the wave in front of it, they scatter backward. And if that external field start to oscillate, those electrons will oscillate within the, each of those potential wells created by the, by the plasma waves. And that the plasma physicists are probably very well aware of. And uh, I don't see why that this, this, this description of you will not cannot be applied to the simple plasma case. This, about the Dick, 
Wigner function uh, description uh, is you, closely you, related to Vlasov equation, of course. Yeah, that, that was the, I mentioned the, the, there, there is a, on a certain, in a certain sense, there is no difference between the Wigner function and your initial equations are just the Vlasov equations for the, for the, for the, so to say, plus quantum plasma, isn't it? Uh, not quite, because uh, yeah, because you admit, but I can write the Wigner function just for the electrons and the electromagnetic field. Yes, sure. And, and the equations will be then basically the same. They will be missing some components. No, no, no. They will be different. Quantum field theory makes this Wigner function quite different from the quantum mechanical Wigner function because it properly distinguishes particles and antiparticles. Yeah, but if I will write the Wigner function just for electrons and the self-consistent electromagnetic field. Then it's a different problem. There is no pair creation and uh, I don't know what will happen, but that's a different problem. I mean, by the physically, you, in some sense, you have two component plasma in your case. The okay, you may say so, yeah. Electrons and positrons, right? Yes, yes, but... And these two components form your whatever it is, they, let, let's call them time crystal, right? And they have, they, they, then let me forget about the one of those components and call the remaining components electrons. Well, what would be the difference between that? Well, problem? once I'm, we I, write I, down the equations, you are, the problem you is- pointed out to us that there is a physical experimentally feasible way of analyzing it. And I'm almost sure that if we dig out deeply in the plasma physics paper, we will find out the description of this self-supporting time structure. Maybe. Nowadays called the, 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 the time crystal. That, Maybe that's, what... that's a good project for a student. No. Talented students. Next slide, please. I want to conclude. Whoops, yes. So the conclusions are that the vacuum populated by pairs coupled in a self-consistent way to the electric field exhibits periodic time evolution. That is certainly true because of the plots that I have shown. It is not known whether the virtual photons, this is the question, that have not been taken into account enhance or destroy the predicted behavior. This is connected with those models of time crystals where we have some fluctuations which are important to creating time crystals. The advantages that we have here is that the system is well-defined and approximations are clearly stated. So on, from that point of view, I think that this system deserves the name of the time crystal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we had some discussions during this presentation, but now is the, the time for next questions. So please. How you could measure this time crystal, time crystal this kind of time crystal? by detecting pairs, which, which are spontaneously created from the vacuum. Yes, and they disappear, of course. The plots that yes, I but present. what are time scales and, and uh, I mean, <laughs> most people would argue that uh, you don't get uh, real in the case of zero external field, you don't get uh, spontaneous creation of real electric electron positron pairs. But here you get this, of course, in the mean field approximation. So it's not exactly a solution of full QED equations, but in this mean field approximation, pairs are created. There is the energy of electric field electric field gives this energy to create pairs. Pairs start moving and the motion of pairs annihilates the field because sort of screening occurs. 
and then the field disappears, but the energy is in the pairs. And this continues periodically. And it's not the ground state, of course, as was already mentioned, it's one of those higher energy what, states. How high field I should I shall use to start this process. Everything here is in natural units. So the uh, time scale here is dictated by the time scale connected with the electron mass and all the units for the time for the electric field are those that are derived from natural units that can be made from E, M and H and C. It's a high <laughs> strength field can we can we make them in the lab or no these are not made in the lab these fields are spontaneous <laughs> is it something like a schwinger limit or uh, well, of course Sh schwinger defined this critical field uh, and this is of course in as far as numbers go all these plots were in units related to the Schwinger field. Uh, Ivo, um, the energy um, of a vacuum uh, uh, is clearly not zero when you have an oscillation. Absolutely, that's true. And, uh, so is there a spectral uh, distribution uh, or spectral strength uh, of the plasma? No, 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 no. Not, not in this model, because in this model, when the field is a mean field, everything is given by a well-defined classical number. So there is no spectrum. Every solution is separate from other solutions. So it's a discrete spectrum? I mean... Uh... No, no. Con you, you, there is no discrete spectrum here because uh, of the time translation invariance of the model. So the spectrum cannot oh, be this. So this is what I don't understand. Um, and I think it relates to all of the other questions which we have uh, asked. Uh, um, uh, by definition, if a vacuum has zero energy, your solution is an excitation of a vacuum. That's true. And as such, um, we need to know if the spectrum of excitations uh, um, uh, is discrete, continuous, um, damped. Um, I mean, we need to know something about uh, uh, it because all experiments which would be aiming at demonstration of... No, no, no. Don't go too far to, to experiments. This is a very simple model. The field is here classical. Spectrum here does not have any place to appear. The, these are classical solutions. No. They're given by, by classical functions of the Wigner function if, equations. Your solutions contain h bar, uh, Evo, because I know these equations very yeah, well. Yeah, of course they contain h bar, but that yeah, does not mean that yeah, there is a spectrum. Uh, uh, as such, uh, and the, in the mean field approximation, there are solutions to quantum field theory. <clears throat> yes. So uh, they cannot be called classical. They're called approximate solutions of quantum field theory. OK. Anyway, I do not know how to find the spectrum of these modes, so to speak. I have no idea. May I have a question? Yes. Because you, in order to, to seek a spontaneous breaking of the symmetry, what we usually need, we need a thermodynamic limit. In a sense that once the symmetry is broken, then we are uh, we, we can hope that the symmetry broken state lives forever, and it lives forever in the thermodynamic limit. I guess that the, this mean field approximation is a kind of thermodynamic limit. But yes, and uh, uh, my question is: uh, this is for the electric field, but for uh, electron uh, positron pairs, how, how many, because they are treated as I, as far as I understand quantum mechanically. And these are also the numbers of pairs are large or, or small? Numbers of pairs are, there is a background which is quite large and there are small fluctuations around the, in these solutions around this background value of pairs. 
And these oscillations are small relative to the oscillations of the current. Current oscillates much more than the number of pairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Well, Professor Rafelski took this too seriously. I mean, this is a very simple model and I have no intention to make it so realistic that I would ask experimental physicists to look for these e Ivo, objects. Ivo, I know how to make it realistic. Good, so, go ahead and do it. I will be more than happy. Uh, and uh, you, we both have worked on this different... Okay. Uh, um, I have a question, if I may, about these virtual photons here in the conclusion, you say. So do you mean plasmons? Yeah, no, no, just photons, ordinary photons. Ah, because... Quantum, quantum mechanical be... photons, which of course... Plasmon decay can be some signature. Uh, well, in a way, these pairs are like plasmons themselves, because these are combinations of particles of opposite charges. So one may call them plasmons. And these plasmons, in terms of plasmons, the plasmons are excited. Just the plasmons are in some sense charged. Otherwise they will not couple to the electromagnetic field and the metals will lose their color. But that's because in plasma, the uh, uh, the plants are having a charge. Yeah, but, but in the case of plasma, there is a great uh, difference between the yeah. charges of opposite sides, electrons and the background. Yeah. So that's not quite the same as here. The plasmons may decay into neutrinos. So maybe th this would be a, some signature. Um, pa pairs. Theoretically speaking, electron positron pairs can also, de can also decay into neutrinos if one assumes that there are neutrinos which do not carry the lepton charge. Okay, if there are no more questions, that I would thank you for the attendance. Thanks. Yeah, if I can, if I can, because I tr struggle to understand what happened here. Uh, I will just try to summarize it in five, four sentences and you tell me whether I understand it right or wrong. You define the Wigner function for quantized electromagnetic field. Put quantized electron. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, electron, uh, electron field, relativistic electron field. Yes. And because of gauge invariance, you get the, 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 the path order exponential, so to speak, quote unquote. Yes. And then, therefore, there is an electromagnetic field involved in this definition. Now you yes. uh, apply equations which uh, follow from Dirac basically equation. Dirac equation to this object, to this Wigner yes. function, and treat the electromagnetic field classically. Yes. And the rest follows from solving these equations, right? In a self-consistent way, that is coupling back the field to the current of electron positron pairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If I can add one uh, clarification to that conversation, uh, the, there are natural two frequencies in the vacuum. One is uh, related to the Zitterbewegung, and the other is to uh, collect the flow of the pairs. And I think the beating of one against the other generates the structure which uh, Ivo presented. And yeah, although I hate the term Zitternbewegung because that is being misused so often that... <laughs> yes, I know, but it is uh, what generates this particular behavior because uh, uh, the existence of the two natural frequencies... Um... Yes, yes, absolutely. The Zitternbewegung in, in my language is just the frequency related to the energy of, of a pair, 2 mc squared. That's the frequency of Sitchin Bewegung and has clear interpretation in terms of particle and antiparticle creation. Yeah. And so that's why there's a perpetual um, uh, uh, oscillatory motion of which. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so there's a, so that, will be, so that is an insight which is, uh, I don't know if I can call it time crystal, uh, but uh, uh, the, it's a catchy word, but. Uh, there is an excitation 
a relatively low energy density excitation of a, a QED vacuum, which is interesting to, uh, to know about and then ultimately to uh, exploit. Um, yes, I yes. Went... Okay, so thank you for this discussion. And with these remarks, I think we can uh, close this colloquium.